so <clears throat> going into the hamstrings, right? Where are the hamstrings? I think everyone knows the back of the leg, back of the thighs where the hamstrings actually are, right? Thing to understand about the hamstrings, right? Anytime you're looking at a muscle, anytime you're looking at a muscle, you kind of understand like where it starts and where it ends or where the fixed point is and where the ending, where the movable point is. Because in, in most muscles, you have a fixed and you have an ending point, right? The fixed point we call the origin, the ending point we call the insertion. So basically, essentially, if you look at the quote, fixed point, the fixed point is basically, um, uh, it crosses the hip. So the hamstrings itself crosses the hip. Um, <clears throat> now they cross the knee, okay? Um, and attach on that lower leg bone, which is like the tibia and the fibula, right? So your shin bones, the tibia and the fibula, that's where they attach. Um, my mom just came on. Hey, Ma. <laughs> um, stop the film. Stop, stop the, the film. Hey, Ma. <laughs> Gotta stop it for mom. So um, uh, my mom's actually killing it. She she just she told me today about her training session. She was doing intervals oh, nice. up the hill. Yeah. Um, with with their dog Marley. Doing some hits. He's killing it too. Marley's killing it. <laughs> so uh, um, great job, Ma. Really great job. So okay, going back. So going to the hamstrings, right? So. Again, the hamstrings cross the hip joint and they uh, insert on the lower leg, which is the shin, which we can call the fibula as well as the tibia, right? Tibia, excuse me. Now, what does that mean? If you cross the knee and you cross the hip, it means that these muscles, the hamstrings, literally work at both the hip and they also work at the knee. So they're going to have actions at the hip and the knee. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> so. Let's talk about that for a second, okay? You have the outer hamstrings and you have the inner hamstrings, right? The outer hamstrings, some people call, they're two muscles, right? And uh, just like the biceps, the biceps femoris, right? Uh, um, this is the biceps femoris, but just like the biceps brachii, basically they're two muscles, so we call them the biceps femoris because it's on the femur. And so essentially, basically, two muscles, we call them the biceps femoris or the outer hamstrings, right? So what do they do? They flex the leg. Um, all the hamstrings are going to flex at the knee. So when you flex the knee like a leg curl, right, that is all the hamstrings are going to do that, ultimately. Part of that hamstring muscle is also going to extend the hip, right? So if I stand up out of my seat, my hip is extending, OK? So it's not just the knee. The, the, the hip is extending, OK? So that's ex hip extension, um, <clears throat> right? So if you think about it, like if you do a stiff legged deadlift and you're raising up and you're basically your hips are thrusting forward, that's hip extension. OK. Um, and then there's uh, basically knee extension where I'm curling my leg. Make sense, guys? OK. So now here's the other thing. The inner hamstrings, you also have the inner hamstrings. You don't need to know the names, but they are the semi tendinosis and semi membranosis. Just know you have the inner hamstrings, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so they're interesting. So inner hamstrings, outer hamstrings. Now the inner hamstrings, basically, because they're on the inner part of the leg, they rotate the hip like inward, and the outer hamstrings rotate the hip outward. So like when basically, if I if I'm turning my toes outward, rotating my basically my my knee outward, that's going to be the outer hamstrings. The inner hamstrings going to rotate it inward. Okay. So all the hamstrings flex at the knee. Most of the hamstrings extend the hip. The inner hamstrings turn your toe. Well, if you if you turn your toe or your knee inward, that's inner hamstrings. Outwards, outer hamstrings. Make sense? That's their function. Okay. <clears throat> now, now let's talk about muscle fibers. When most people think about muscle fibers, they think that essentially that the hamstrings are mainly fast twitch. Okay, uh, and so you just just train them heavy. In reality, they're very close. In fact, they're roughly 50-50 fast slow. A little bit skewed to fast by a few percentage points, but they're mainly uh, they're a combination of the two. So what does that mean? When you're training the hamstrings, you're going to want to train them in both repetition ranges. And I think that's kind of the point, the take home message of that, right? If you're training the hamstrings, you're going to want to train them in both dimensions um, with high reps, um, which could be 15 to 20 repetitions, uh, 12 to 15 repetitions, short rest, 30 to 60 seconds, and then heavy reps, 
six to eight repetitions, three minutes rest in between sets, okay? Notice I said six to eight because um, if your primary goal is hypertrophy, I still think you should stay in, uh, shouldn't dip below five or six reps. If your goal is strength, you're gonna need to hit one to five reps just because of specificity. Um, now, think about this for a second, right? When do people pull their hamstrings? A lot of times it's when they do what? Sprinting, okay? My dad was really fast. <clears throat> In fact, he's still fast. Um, and uh, and he, he, you know, uh, um, you know, lettered in basically all sports, He'd be very fast, and, but my dad also had a tendency to pull hamstrings. And so one of the things about that is like, wh why is that? Well, one of the studies were presented shows that when you sprint, you literally are activating um, the, mus the hamstring muscles as much as you maximally voluntarily contracting them on a static leg curl. So if I were to like hold your leg in place and say contract as hard as you can on a leg curl, if you're sprinting, you're actually getting as much activation as that or higher. Okay, now that's pretty impressive. That's a maximal voluntary contraction. So it says like you go outside and you do sprints, you're gonna get some serious hamstring development, right? So if your hamstrings are lagging, definitely do sprints. But also, what does it also say? If you haven't done a lot of sprints and you don't, you're a quad dominant and you don't train your hamstrings much, you better be careful and you better train your hamstrings and your glutes because they might go on you, okay? So point is, sprints definitely activate the hamstrings and that's the point, okay? So there's another interesting concept, right? One of the biggest things you can do, and we all know this, that when you're trying to build the hamstrings up is doing leg curls. Leg curls are a staple in hamstring development. But the thing is, because the hamstrings flex at the knee, there's another muscle that does too. It's the gastrocnemius or the, the large calf muscle that crosses the knee, knee joint, okay? So the, the, the calf muscles can actually help flex at the knee. Now, if you want to take that away and put more workload on the hamstrings, what you need to do basically is if you, if you are basically, um, if essentially what you need to do is plantar flex, right? And that's, that, or that, that's the, the main point, or sorry, excuse me. Basically, like if you're actually like doing something like if you plantar flex, um, the, the hamstrings will essentially get um, more of a, a workload, or excuse me, less of a workload. So basically, if you think about it like this, <clears throat> the gastrox, if you stretch it, so like this here, that's dorsiflexion, then the hamstrings get more workload. But if you, if you plantar flex, like point your toes down, when you do leg curls, you'll actually get more activation uh, of the hamstrings. So let me summarize that all up. The, the, both the hamstrings and the calf muscles, particularly the gastrocnemius, flex the, the, the leg, okay? The, the calves don't work as well when you point your toes forward. They work better when your toes are pointed like this, okay? Um, and so if you wanna take that out and put more workload in the hamstrings, point your toes forward when you do leg curls. Now when you go to failure on the other hand, and you can't get another rep that way, then point your toes up and that'll be a way to get forced reps. Definitely a way to make your calves grow. So we go to the next uh, part of this lesson, and the question is, are squats a good hamstring exercise? Everyone's like, just squat. You don't need to do anything else. Just squat. You don't need to do anything else, right? I mean, you got to think of it this way, guys. Like, when you go on a pl when you, when you're gonna go eat, right? And you're going, well, all you need is broccoli. All you need is broccoli. All you need is, bro is broccoli. No, you're like broccoli, green beans, right? Paul likes kale. You know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> kale is good. Don't you say that. You eat kale occasionally. You know you like it. Doc likes kale. Team kale over here. Go over there, Team Iceberg, whatever you are. The iceberg wedges are good, though. That's my thing. They're really good, too, but that's when you load it with cheese and yeah. bacon. Yeah, of course it's going to be that's good. That's true. That's true. Um, the point, carrots. The point is, like, you don't just say one vegetable, right? So why do people just say, just squat, right? It might be the broccoli of leg exercises, but it's, that's not the only thing you should eat, and that's the point. So, are squats particularly a great exercise for hamstrings? I know I'm gonna get attacked on this, but the answer is no, they're not. They're, just, they're not the best exercise for hamstrings, and I'll tell you why. Because when you're coming up out of the hole on a squat, <clears throat> okay, you're extending the knee. The knee's got to extend. Now the hamstrings are hip extensors, yes, so they're gonna work at the hip, that's true. 
but they're also knee flexors. That's going to counter knee extension. So you're, you can't, you're not going to get maximal hamstring activity when you squat. So the squat's going to help with the hamstrings, but it's not ideal. Now, if you do the same amount, if you do the same load on the hips, but you're doing like um, uh, stiff-legged deadlifts, now you take knee extension out of the game and you'll maximize hamstring activation, okay? So stiff-legged deadlifts, yes, squats are more of a quad dominant exercise. Um, but I'm gonna come back later on basically how to make them more of a hamstring exercise. Because we all love squats, right? Uh, <clears throat> so next, next thing is, can toe position direct tension in the hamstrings? And the answer is yes, okay? Remember we go back to our original lesson, the inner hamstrings, semi, your semi, semi-membranosis, semi-tendinosis, they turn the toes in, okay? Now, when your, your outer hamstrings, the lateral hamstrings, or the biceps femoris, they turn the toes out, okay? So when you're doing leg curls, if you point the toes out, you hit more of that outer hamstring sweep. So if you're doing like a side chest pose or something like that, and you want to highlight those outer hamstrings, that's important on stage, right? You know? So like um, super important on stage, if you're trying to highlight that outer hamstring, you, you to point the toes out, you, it helps. You get a little bit more quad separation on your side chest poses and things like that. Anything from the side is going to be you know, improved like that, right? Um, now, if you point your toes in, it's going to be more of the inner hamstrings, right? Now, <clears throat> some people are like, no, squat is the best exercise ever for hamstrings. You know what? Let's say that we just say, I'm not going to take that from you, okay? Let's say squats are okay for hamstrings, all right? I don't think they're the best, but say they're okay. But how do we optimize them? Remember, the hamstrings themselves are very important for what? Not just knee flexion, they're important for hip extension, okay? So what is hip extension? I'm thrusting at the hips. So like when I'm coming down, the hips are moving forward. They're thrusting forward, okay? So that's one of the main points is that we want to thrust the hips forward on a squat. So how do we increase the, the, the movement at the hips? Well, one of the things that you want to be sensitive to is, think about it. if you sit back and you come, come up by thrusting forward, that's the hips, okay? So move at the hips, move at the hips. Like one of the reasons why Paul can squat so much, what do you weigh, Paul? Uh, 190. God, he's like every single day. Yeah, Paul's on. like huge. Paul's <laughs> growing like a weed. Like we, were, we weighed the same when we came in. I was like 178, 176. Paul was like what? Paul's like probably about that size, right? Like, last year when I came here, I was like one. I came here like 168, 165. Okay. Now he's 190 and solid as a rock. But you squat. squat. I mean, Paul's like can probably squat like 500 pounds. He could squat 500 pounds. Well, how does he do it? Part of it is got a lot of muscle, yes, but. He's got good technique. He's got good technique along with the muscle. He's Paul's dense. Like Paul's dense. Like a dense, you know what? Like, and I, there's a good compliment. Like I came, I came to their door there in the uh, Neo Nico at the front desk. Yeah. He's like, Paul, you're back, right? <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, I thought I got. I thought, I thought I don't know, but I thought it was a compliment because Paul's dense and dense. yes. I said okay. You're a little so, tan. I'm a little bit less. Actually, yeah. you know, that's pretty close actually. Yeah. Not yeah. So anyway, so basically, Paul. Well, he'll sit back and he'll thrust forward. Sit back and he'll thrust forward. A lot of guys when they squat, just squat up and down, up and down. Back, thrust forward, back, thrust forward. Like you're sitting in a chair and thrusting forward, right? <clears throat> so that's an activate hamstrings. Now when you're doing like leg press, if you wanna increase the, the moment or, or the, the, basically the amount of force required by the hip, move your feet up high in the leg press and focus on the hips. High up on the leg press, and focus on the hips. Let's summarize this all up. The hamstring muscles, you have the inner hamstrings, you have the outer hamstrings. All the hamstrings flex the knee, most of the hamstrings extend the hip, right? If you're doing leg curls, you will um, um, place tension on one hamstring or the other more so, turn the toes out, hits the outer hamstrings, and hits the inner hamstrings, okay? Um, the squat's not ideal for hamstring development. It's more like stiff-legged like deadlifts is going to train hip extension ideally. However, we all love squats, and if you want to optimize hamstring development for the squats, you want to sit back and thrust forward. If you're trying to optimize it for the leg press, you want to put your feet up. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the other thing we talked about was basically the role of the calf muscle in doing leg curls. 
the, the calves contribute to leg curls, okay? So essentially, what you really want to know is that, like, um, if, well, if essentially, if I point my toes up, that's called dorsiflexion, it takes the, um, basically, you'll, you're going to have less hamstring activation. But if you point your toes forward, you have more hamstring activation. So start off with your toes pointed forward, okay? When you go to failure, if you want to keep getting more reps, then point them up because then the, the, the calves mechanically will have a better advantage to help you. Um, and I, Oh, muscle fibers are roughly 50-50, so have a good combination of heavy days and light days. And guys, that's the lesson for the hamstrings for today. And you know what, you know what time it is now, right? Q&A. So, Q&A time, guys. Um, by the way, if you are on Facebook, share the love on this, guys. Share the love. Um, okay, this is back to the actual squats for hamstring activation. Okay. Um, what about rear foot elevated split squats? That's another way to increase the, the moment at the hip. So that's going to be a good exercise um, uh, for the hamstrings. Absolutely. Rebecca Hub Hudson says, exercise for glute hamstring separation in women. I'm going to recommend to you um, a lot of stuff, like essentially um, hip extension movements are going to be really good for that. Reverse lunge to <clears throat> high knee. Oh, reverse lunge to high knee. So, kind of, kind of I'm going to demonstrate this one. Andy's going to demestrate yeah. this. So, can you, um, yeah. Try to zoom in on you? Literally, Andy's stepping in, that's backwards. Good, yeah. He steps backwards. Like this. Yeah. 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 And then coming yeah. up yeah. with your knee like that. Yeah. You're, you're moving up a bunch of different plane, um, planes and you're activating numerous muscles. You're activating a lot of muscles. So, uh, that was good, man. I like yeah. that. So, and honestly, one of my favorites. Yeah. And, Andy works with a lot of competitors, um, and when he works with them, they got great glute hamstring tie -ins. It's like great. Oh my god! I think it's people are scared of what people think of themselves in the gym. So back to the same idea: yeah, as the yeah, eagle yeah, lifter yeah, with the yeah, squats. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's other ways. 100. percent um, Ultimate Human Machines. That's a really cool name. Ultimate Human Machines uh, says, "When is the course coming out?" Now is a cool name. It's a great, great question. So guys, if you've been following my story, you see that we're working on the Muscle PhD course. This thing is going to be sick. This thing is like, basically what we're doing is we're taking like our life's work, right? <laughs> like not sleeping, dreaming about building muscle. You know what I mean? <laughs> Going to school like multiple degrees, never stop studying for this stuff, you know? Put it in simple <laughs> terms, how many years of education consolidated into one it's course? Like, I mean decades how many years all of education of are at aspi I, I don't even know oh probably like five decades yeah probably yeah yeah yeah, yeah. All, into one course. all in the one course like five decades all in one course and you got to think about this for a second like i'm telling you man when we went when we went to school i'm sorry there's so much time wasted right i literally went i probably took 10 classes where they re-went over the krebs cycle like Guys, I got you, right? I get it. Yeah, guy, like, yeah, like, that was cool. I was really excited about the Krebs cycle and intro to biology, <laughs> right? Okay? And it got real boring, like, after biochemistry, right? And then every damn course I took, they always start with that. Every single one. So, guys, like, we'll go, we're, we'll cover it once and we'll tell you what you need to know, right? So, the point is, we're gonna take all this education and we're gonna put it in English. I see everything is like academics encode everything. That doesn't make it smarter. It does not make it smarter. It just means it's encoded in a language that no one else can understand, right? Like when I went to Brazil, you know, I didn't I didn't know how to speak I didn't know how to speak Portuguese, right? It's not that they didn't have important information. I didn't know, so I'd have a translator when I was talking. Same thing here. We're translating academics. We're going to take five decades worth of information and we're going to consolidate that into micro lectures. Our goal is to launch that in November. So it'll be on the Muscle PhD website. So we're very excited about that. We're working super hard on it. Super hard. <clears throat> Anthony Poon, what's up, my man? Good to see you, Anthony. What would your training be different from bulking to cutting? It's a good question. I'm going to put it in perspective too because everybody always says high reps whenever you're starting to cut weight. Right, right, right. Here's the thing, guys. What you did to gain muscle 
you got to still do to keep it, right? The only thing I will say that might be a benefit is increasing your training frequency. When you're dieting, you don't have as much energy. So for example, I might be able to train for two hours straight when I'm bulking to have so many calories, right? But after an hour when I'm dieting, it's going to be hard. What if I did an hour in the morning, an hour at night, right? My intensity might be better than when I was bulking. So I think the main difference is I would increase your training frequency and break body parts up more. Cyclic bulking, do it. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. Uh, don't just bulk for months. You're going to become insulin resistant, fat, and you won't have any pumps. Bad mistake. High reps to fatigue, the muscle first, I would do that last. High reps last. There's lots of studies on it, or there's at least a study on it. Uh, Dolazai Egon says Romanian deadlift is good for the hamstrings damn straight it is um, it, it's good for hip extension buddy really good for hip extension uh, can tight hamstrings and calves affect hip flexor activation yes absolutely so if they're tight definitely and vice versa vice versa a lot of times like when we work with NFL combine athletes we actually saw that tight hip flexors prevented glutes hip extensor sensors from being activated. So be, uh, be careful on both of those. Are two hours of training too much? I mean, are you growing? <laughs> then no. Yeah. Depends on intensity too. Yeah, it depends on intensity. Like, I think if you do it every single training session, yes, you need to switch it up, right? <clears throat> okay. Are Romanian deadlifts enough on hamstrings in one training session? I would have a variety of exercise. Going back to broccoli and green beans, I think it's good to have a combination of them, right? Uh, favorite hamstring exercise? I mean, if you had to pick one favorite one, they all flex the knee. So probably hamstring curl, to be quite honest. Yeah, probably. And I to, to, Lying to, or seated? I would say I like lying. I like lying. My hamstring curls, yeah. So... But seated are good, and one of the one of the things about seated is they they can put the hamstring on stretch, so that could be beneficial for like muscle damage. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right. yeah, yeah, it puts the hamstring on stretch, so uh, that actually might cause potentially more muscle growth. Uh, Yana Ginneman says, are kneeling squats more beneficial than standing squats for hamstring and glute development? It's a good question. I don't know if they were compare the two, but I think they're potentially a very good uh, hamstring movement because it takes out the knee extension component of things. Very creative, Yana. Very creative. I definitely think that could work. All right, Jai Elite says, how would you lay out a hamstring day? What movements, what order? Really good question. Really good question. Um, the thing to understand, generally speaking, when you're, when you're working the hamstrings, there's two things that you have to consider, okay? <clears throat> There's um, the amount of energy it's going to take out of you is one thing, and then there's the ability to activate it, okay? So like hamstring curls, you're going to be able to, it's easy to activate things. Oh, that's right, Friday where I'll have a workout of the week. That was last Friday. Was last oh, it was last week. Okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely check out the order on our hamstring uh, workout that was on Friday right there. <laughs> check it out for sure. Um, if you notice the order of that, basically what happens is, in general, I'm going to give you your base exercise principles, okay? They get more complex than this. You do compound before isolation. That's your general basic principles, okay? Compound before isolation. So basically what that means is that you're going to start with stuff like deadlifts first, because that's going to, say you do, say you do deadlifts, um, stiff-legged deadlifts, uh, and you have hyperextensions, and you have leg curls. The most compound out of all of those are going to be your traditional deadlift, okay? Because you're using the quads and the hamstrings. It takes the most energy to start with that, okay? Your second exercise, which takes the second amount of most energy, is going to be your stiff-legged deadlifts. Third exercise, hyperextensions. Fourth exercise is going to be hamstring curls. Now, let me put a caveat to that. By the time you get to hyperextensions, your low back might be taxed and it might be too much on you, so you might want to interrupt that with a hamstring curl exercise and then go to the hyperextensions. Now, some of you might be saying, that I got a hard time activating my hamstrings, so shouldn't I start with isolation? That's where it could be beneficial, is maybe you start with something that's a pre-activation exercise 
Don't necessarily fatigue the hamstrings out, but if you do some hamstring curl movements, um, or you know, you may pre-activate the hamstrings, just non-fatiguing so you don't wear yourself out on the compound movements. So I hope that helps out. Explanation on cyclic bulking, when you know to cut. Okay, basically, traditionally, people will bulk like say it's like winter time and they'll bulk throughout all the winter, right? That's what I do. It's like five months. Yeah, F it. I can put on a sweater. They get so excited. And I'm just, you, coming, you wear the hoodie the whole so you got a hoodie on and stuff like that. Who cares, right? Doesn't matter. Okay? But the thing is, so you might bulk like, you know, Thanksgiving, right when Thanksgiving hits, right? Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas and January, three months of bulking, and heck, it's still cold in February, throw that's four months, okay? <laughs> okay, and the thing you're like, you know, so that, that's, I think, a key thing. So people, now, but think about it for a second, right? You adapt to anything, you adapt to anything, guys, okay? And you also adapt to the anabolic response of bulking, right? So what happens? If I'm continually taking in excess calories, I'm gonna become insulin resistant. Guess what insulin has an important role in? Muscle growth. Also, insulin has an important role in the pump. So if you notice, you start up in your calories, you get these huge pumps, skin tight pumps. You look tighter, muscles are fuller, more fuller, round, rounder muscle bellies, and it's like they start to go away. And you start to notice your muscles don't get as big. And your fat is hypertrophy, right? <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> Who wants that, right? We want to become like Paul where you go from 168 to 190. It's like all muscle, right? That's the goal, right? That's like the utopia, right? So Paul's living my utopia right now. So basically, um, what you want to do is to avoid that, go like two-week bulks and then maybe a one-week cut. Or what you could do is calorie cycle. So you go high-calorie day moderately over your normal uh, maintenance calories, maintenance calories, and then one day slightly below maintenance to increase insulin sensitivity. So it's like high, moderate, maintenance, slightly below. You have net, you have a net, net increase in calories for the week, but you're still not letting your body adapt, okay? Or you could go four days bulking, one day maintenance, two days slightly below, okay? So that's my advice. All right, Mellow Winded says, can I eat oatmeal? Sure, if you want. Eggs and yogurt four times a day to meet my surplus. I mean... Some conversation about bringing different food sources. Okay, yeah. Here's the... I mean, here's the thing, man. <clears throat> I'm, like, I'm going to tell you, like, can you... The, like, in, I'm not saying it's ideal, but, like, when I, was in, when I was in grad school, I did really crazy stuff. Uh, and when I had my most muscle, <laughs> like... One time, all I ate was oatmeal and whey, literally like six to eight times and a day. If you have not tried it, it is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. But I got really jacked when I did it. Um, <laughs> but I was also trained like three times a day. I contribute my gains to oatmeal. <laughs> it was oatmeal and whey, yeah. So you could, but the problem is remember that one advantage to variety is we don't want to just think of muscle protein synthesis. One advantage to variety is that you're getting other nutrients. That's why I'd probably recommend having a combination of nutrients. If that's your go-to meal, have it a few times a day, but still throw in some variety, my friend. Okay, when are we doing rapid fire? Uh, start. Right Should we now. start rapid fire? Yes, do it. All right. Uh, Yana says, any benefit or drawback doing fasted cardio and weight training? Um, yeah. Um, you know, you could lose muscle. During intermittent fasting, can you have small amount of carbs? I didn't, oh, that's all right. Uh, there we go. During intermittent fasting, can you have small amount of car of carbs to protein prior to training? I mean, instead of fasting, I'm assuming. I would say no. I mean, you're not fasting. Yeah. But BCAs, you know, technically you're breaking the fast, but whatever. Same idea. Same idea. Right Fasted cardio or hit to lose fat? Uh, if I had to choose one, I go hit. But I think fast cardio can have some benefits. To be honest, you know, I really do. Hi, Doc. Do back or front lunges produce better, I'm guessing you say, EMG activity in the uh, hamstrings? Yep. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, so back or front lunges? It should be like rear, rear foot lunges. Um, <clears throat> yeah, rear's going to have more activation. Front, though, is going to cause more muscle damage because you're stretching the hamstring out more. 
So rear more activation, uh, but I would say front is going to be more muscle damage. Uh, high reps, low weight, or low reps, high weight for barbell hip thrust. Both gray Jedi. Uh, Elvira says, you mentioned sprinting is great for ham hamstrings. Yeah. Does running activate the hamstrings? Running activates the hamstrings, and it makes you lose muscle in the hamstrings. Um, how long should I bulk for? Go, use my cyclic bi bulking advice. Uh, OK. Um, there we go. Uh, how do you figure out your maintenance calories? Well, your, your body generally defaults to maintenance calories. So just track your calories for a week and see if you gained or lost weight. If you didn't, you're, it's your maintenance calories. Um, best treatment for bad hip flex, or you come to ASPI, your metabolism measures. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> Boom. Squirrel in the room. So, uh, where's it? What's the question? Oh, uh, let's do this one first, actually. How do I build bigger sweep in my legs? Um, well, that's the outer hamstrings and the outer quad sweep, right? So, what I would recommend is things like hack squats for sure, um, you know, and squats, squats with closer feet. Um, uh, I would do leg press with your feet low on the pad and close together. Um, and I would, when you do leg curls, turn your toes out because that'll give you that separation between the hamstrings and the quads. Do that nice outer, uh, outer hamstring, you know, sweep or outer quad sweep. It's beautiful. Uh, other thing is, if your waist is smaller, the sweep on the quads looks bigger, right? So. Uh, there you go. How's this rapid fire coming for you? Okay. <laughs> All right, Paul's bringing it. Guys, I'm going rapid fire. Batman versus uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, the movie, the movie Batman, but you know. Wonder Woman was awesome. I must say, great movie. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a great movie. Yeah. Right, back to it. Right. But I do like Wonder Woman. I'm not gonna lie. I love that. I love the outfit. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I got lost. Okay. So, <laughs> what's the question here? <laughs> I was trying to that hip Freaking awesome, awesome outfit. Right. Great Halloween outfit right there. <laughs> That's a dog story. Right? <laughs> yeah. Best treatment for bad hip flexors and lower back. Train your glutes. Boom. <clears throat> um, are BCA's intra workout better during cardio or weight training? Both. That's a rat's right for fire, right? Yep, keep going. Okay. Intermittent fasting to build muscle. Uh, you can build muscle doing it. <clears throat> what is your opinion on if it fits your macros? Um, I think uh, it can work, and I think it can work against you. Uh, Rebecca, German volume training for hamstrings recommended? Absolutely. Um, what's the next one? Oh, is it possible to gain muscle and prepare for physique competition only on high fat and protein diet with low carbs? Yes. Um, what I do instead of deadlifts if I have a knee injury, hamstring curls. Oh, yeah, knee injury. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's like oh, um, well you can do hyperextensions. Um, you guys are awesome. You help me to become a much better version of myself in many aspects. Uh, that's Slami Levi. Um, thank you. I really appreciate that, man. You know what? You being on here improves us and a lot of people out there. So thank you and share the love. Uh, Y'all Del Rosario says, notice me, sir. You just got notice it, y'all. <laughs> you just got notice it. You just got notice, man. I love you. Thanks for following the program. Y'all, you are the man. Okay, uh, next question. Um, <clears throat> do you think a vegan diet is good for building muscles? Uh, no. Um, not saying you can't do it, but no. Consuming 20, 20 whole eggs per day, <laughs> is it good or not? Yeah. Uh, dense. yeah um, I mean. The same premise as before. Yeah. You want to have variety. All right, right here, real quick. Okay. Uh, where are we? Right here. Okay. Uh, thoughts on Yohimbine. Uh, check out our muscle PHE. We actually just had a post on it. Yohimbine uh, works. I can't go into more detail. <laughs> it's rapid fire. I want to. Uh, no. OK. Um, <clears throat> is there any exercise that a diabetic should not do? I don't know. 
I don't see. Check out Phil Graham, though. He's awesome. He's got some great stuff on that. Uh, Natalie was before she said, hey, Natalie, what's going on? Uh, Burns. Oh, we, we already said that. Best way to build a sweep in the lake. We said that, dude. Right here. Uh, Nick Billow says, you're my hero. Dude, that means a lot. Uh, you know what? I really appreciate that. Airport.